Hello everyone and welcome welcome to another Explore video. So today we're going to be looking at Abzan Midrange which has been highly highly requested from my viewers. It seems to be the case that Siege Rhino has been a very popular card and it makes sense because since this card used to be one of the standard all-stars back in the days. But without further ado, let's take a closer look at the deck to see how the deck looks like. So this is the version that I'm going to be playing today. I'm going to be playing this in best of one just to try out how the deck does. And I'll also have a wrap section at the end of the video to talk about some downfalls of the deck. And there will probably be a lot to talk about at the wrap up section just because I don't believe this to be the finalized version of the Amazon mid range. But having said that, let's talk about the deck. So we got a bunch of removal spells and the creatures and even the planeswalkers in this deck. But you might be wondering, like, where is Llanowell? Where is Elvish Mystic? And that's something you could actually try out to see if it works. But I went for the one drop slots as Fatal Push and Thought Seizes just to have removal spells and hand disruptions on turn one. And then follow it up with the Paradise Druid on turn two, which is going to be kind of like a placeholder card until we get a card called Sylvan Karyatid from Pioneer. And basically the card accomplishes the same thing that the Paradise Druid does. It has Hexproof. It also generates one mana of any color. But the upside to the Karyatid is that it's a 0-3 defender. So it has two more toughness than Paradise Druid. Against an aggro deck, it actually works a lot better. But the reason why we're playing Paradise Druid is because we are trying to play Siege Rhino. And Siege Rhino has three different colors and the casting cost. So Sometimes it can be a little bit awkward. You might not have enough mana to cast the Siege Rhino unless from a Paradise Druid. And especially trying to cast Siege Rhino with Llanowar Elf generating a green source might be a little bit difficult in a three color deck. So Paradise Druid is trying to fulfill that role in trying to cast a Siege Rhino on turn three. And in the Explore meta, there's a lot of Rakdos mid range, some burn decks. A lot of spot removals to answer Llanowar Elf, so Paradise Druid is going to be pretty much necessary in this deck so that we can safely cast Siege Rhino against aggro decks on turn 3. But other than Siege Rhino, we are playing Graveyard Trespasser and Tireless Tracker for our other mid-range creatures. Graveyard Trespasser is just a fantastic card, and it also drains your opponent's life whenever it attacks or comes into the battlefield as long as there's a creature on either side of the graveyard. It's just a fantastic mid-range creature. As for Tireless Tracker, this is a new card that we received from Explore Anthology. It's a 3 on a 3 2 that, that has attacks whenever an enter land enters the battlefield, you investigate. And then once the clue is sacrificed, Tireless Tracker gains plus one plus one counter on itself. So this is another mid range creature that just kind of goes out of control and adds on value on top of value. But I'm not 100% sure on this card yet. But the reason why I'm playing this is because one, it's new. And two, we have Vraska here, which lets you sacrifice a clue token without having to pay two mana. So on turn three, if you play Tireless Tracker and on the next turn, you play a land and you follow it up with Vraska, then you can plus two on the Vraska, letting you sacrifice the clue token that you just made from the land coming onto the battlefield. And then you can draw one card that way. And at the same time, the Tireless Tracker is going to grow into a 4-3. So that's a pretty cool combo that you can do in this deck. But the problem that I see with Tireless Tracker is the fact that it has only two toughness. So in a meta where there's a lot of Bone Crusher Giants, be it Red Decks or even Rakdos Midrange, people are going to play Bone Crusher Giants. So I'm not 100% sure Tireless Tracker can actually survive in this meta. But if it does get going, the card just kind of goes out of control. And the fact that it synergizes really well with Frosca. And the other Planeswalker that we're going to be playing is Wandering Emperor. So Wandering Emperor is it's just a broken card. And especially considering we play Siege Rhino, which has Trample at the same time. When you have a Siege Rhino on the battlefield, you can actually use that as kind of like a combat trick with the Wandering Emperor. Since Siege Rhino has Trample, it's actually going to incentivize your opponent to maybe double blocking or triple blocking because this thing has Trample, you can't just chump block it. But then once they do that, you can flash in Wandering Emperor and then give it the first strike and then they're going to have a huge blowback. So that's another combo that you can do in this deck. 
But aside from that, we are playing one copy of Farewell, one copy of Globling, and one copy of Scavenging Ooze just because we want to deal with the graveyard since we are playing best of one. And Farewell isn't too bad either if you meet an Angel deck and probably the Angel might be a little bit tough for this deck to deal with just because they don't really care about life gain losses that we generate with Siege Rhino and the Trespasser. And that's the whole reason why we're also playing Vanishing Verse so that we can get rid of the, some angels. And the last two cards we're going to be playing is as two copies of Assassin's Trophy as our flexible removal spell. But that's all I have to say about the deck. Again, we're going to be jumping into best of one explore ranked Q to see how the deck does. And if you guys enjoyed the video so far, leave a like, comment below, and subscribe if you haven't. And let's hop on over. Um... I think that's a mulligan. We want to be able to see like thought seizes. Hmm. Okay. It's a pretty annoying deck, isn't it? I'll take the one mana card. They don't have a turn one play. That means they can't keep up their counter spells. Perfect. Graveyard Trespasser sticking in this matchup is just so good. Although they do have the Ottawara, so I'm not sure. So, I think I am actually going to Wandering Emperor now. I've learned much during my travels. Let me show you. Strike fast and strike hard. To get some fast clock going. Wow. That's... That's aggressive. And they attack me. Okay. Um, let's see. Whenever another spirit enters the battlefield under your control, counter target instant or sorcery. Does that mean they have another? No. Okay, I'm confused. What just happened? I I was for sure they had another slip out the back, but apparently they don't. We also have a hive now. It's this this is just unlosable at this point.
That is so sad. They can't kill the Wandering Emperor. Let's pump this up. <laughs> That's so sad. They have to balance the land. Okay, opponent back to square one. Would you like to kill my Wandering Emperor or go... Oh, now you want to attack Wandering Emperor. Okay. Hmm. Watch out. I never give up. Maybe they have another well, Otawara. in this fight. Yup. Yup, yup, yup. Turn 1 thought he was just so good. One land. That's all I ask for. It's so good otherwise, this hand. Uh, any lands? Oh no. That's so many thought seizes. That is actually way too many thought seizes. Land. Actually, they're gonna take my go blank. Land. Land. Yes. My tireless tracker kind of sucks. It dies to Bone Crusher Giant. Hmm. Okay, well, uh, we have a problem. We do have a problem. I, I can't play this because it dies to Bone Crusher Giant. Hmm, I might have to reevaluate this card. Because the problem is that Rakto's uh Rakto's mid-range is a very, very popular deck. And the fact that this dies to Bone Crusher Giant means that we're kinda screwed. Okay. Land there was literally the best thing we could have asked for. Siege Rhino online. Let's go. So if they actually play Soren and the Minus, the Soren just dies. Because of uh, Siege Rhino having Trample. No! 
Oh my god! I was trying to play Tireless Tracker and then play a Blooming Marsh there. Oh my god, I'm so tilted right now. Okay, so from the looks of it, there's just no way they can actually kill the Siege Rhino here. I mean, actually they can. They could. Because what I was trying to do is play the Tireless Tracker play the land, and the following turn I play Vraska, and then plus on the Vraska on the clue token. So that was actually what I was trying to do, but accidentally, it's just Vraska wanted to run out. Like, I, I don't know. So something they could do here is that they attack with both. And then... Okay, this works out. I bring order to this broken... They plussed, okay. Nothing on Innistrad is free. Okay, this works out. I don't die that easily. Another siege rhino? That's pretty nice. Okay, another Siege Rhino. It's kind of a hard turn because, uh... I could just Siege Rhino here. opponent doing I think I do have to attack Soren here though Keep sacrificing the land. My ways are not for the weak. They got a couple of choices. They can use the Den to attack. 
Politos? Okay. Okay, that does complicate things a little bit. So we do have to block. Unfortunately. And let's see. Tireless Tracker. Lay the land. So I can I can technically kill Kalitas here. Perfect. Okay, let's attack Soren. Lock with the Kali Toss. Okay, opponent has no idea that Kali Toss is a 4 mana, and I also just got a revolt after sacrificing a permanent. That is a whoops. Man. This having trample is just so good. And this Roska, man, it's just it's it's farming. The car is just farming. Investigate. Draw a card. Okay, I take it. I take everything back. Tireless Tracker is a phenomenal card. Let's get rid of a Kiki Jiki. That car is kind of annoying. Let's siege Rhino this. Ho oh, ho ho, opponent. Oh, opponent. You are gonna be so sad. Run away. You'll be safer. All right. These planeswalkers are just so gas. Like especially Vraska. The the combo tireless tracker and Vraska. <laughs> it's just so good. It's so good. What would you like to kill? Oh, that's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. I still 
will have much uh. That is the wrong one, my friend. We'll attack. They never expect the second one. I'm not overconfident. I made a mistake. <laughs> I need to wait for the band trigger to go off before this happened. My my wandering emperor just died for no reason. But it's okay. We're still gonna win. We're still gonna win. So right now it's night time. One, two. Right? Right. GG's. That was, uh, that was perfect. That was, a uh, classic Absin. Ooh, we got turn 3 Siege Rhino. This is why we play Paradise Druid, by the way. So that we can turn 3 Siege Rhino. Or turn 3 Vraska. Also an option. Also an option. There's actually multiple things we can do here. We can tireless track her, play a land, get a clue token, and then we next turn we use Frosca to kill it. Or we can we can just siege Rhino here, which is not a bad deal. Or we can just kill the Prosperous Innkeeper as well. The problem with Prosperous Innkeeper being on the battlefield, considering this is a life gain deck, means that they can collect the company next turn, in which case, uh, the board, their board might go out of control. Oh, it's an angel deck. It's an angel deck. Okay, we, we need to land. We need to land. Pretty bad. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, that's not cool. Create a 4-4 four, four angel. Whenever an angel you control dies, each other player sacrifices a creature. Hmm. Assassin's Trophy, give them a land. We do need some lands though, like... I don't know where our lands are.
Okay. A bit of a pickle. I mean, this frost got it pretty... Pretty much all you can ask for from a planeswalker. Land! That's not cool though. Angel decks are pretty annoying, isn't it? Angel decks are pretty annoying. I can definitely see why people would want to play angels in best of one because it's really hard to deal with. Like, people don't like main board, board wipes, you know? Yeah, I think, uh, I think we're done here. Perfect. Snap. Keep. Okay. That's how you win against the Yorion control deck. Jugantha. Jugantha. Not a bad hand against Jugantha deck. I'm gonna assume that this is like... I don't know. Some kind of a burn deck, maybe? Mono red. I don't have turn 2 play anyway, so I'm just going to uh, tap that in. Ginger Brood, okay. I got so punished for not shocking that in. Oh my god. I am so sad. A patchwork automaton can be a little bit annoying. But I think we can kind of deal with that. Ingenious Smith is like... Something that I don't really want to deal with, it's... It's a, kind of a 2 for 1 card, which is pretty bad for Abzan. Okay, we need a land. We need a land. Maybe I underestimated the um the damage that Patchwork Automaton's about to do. I think we should be okay. Yeah, we should be okay. I'm gonna do this now in case of like a counter spell, future counter spell, I don't know. Unless they actually do have Metallic Rebuke right now in their hand, and I'm about to be really, really upset. Wow. Wow. Okay, that's, uh... That's very frustrating. I should have waited... I should have waited until it's their turn. This was a very, uh... 4, 5, 6, 7. Seven damage. I go down to six. 
I kill Fatal Push this. Attack with the Trespass. Sorry, I go up to 7. Then they have 3 damage. Another Black Source would be pretty nice here. Okay, sound is cutting out, so I think this is my last game. Save me, Siege Rhino. Come on. Stone Coil Serpent. Okay, that's uh... Yeah, I don't know how I deal. I'm actually gonna just die to this uh, ginger brood. I'm about to just die to this ginger brood. Also, that stone coil servant. So annoying right now. How how do I how do I deal with this? I I can't. Please. Thank you. Oh my god. Please. Not like this. Can you not, opponent? Please. <laughs> what are these draws? Their draws are insane. I can't. They came prepared to beat a siege rhino. I'll tell you that much. Freaking stone coil serpent. I can't. <laughs> Yeah, this is, uh, this is GG. Yeah, that's game. Okay, so... I played about an hour of apps on their range, and the deck is kind of mediocre. Like, Siege Rhino is cool, but in best of one especially, there's too many life gain decks. So, Siege Rhino almost immediately just becomes a mediocre card. But against Rakto's midrange, for instance, it's actually not that bad because of the 4-5 toughness and the fact that this is a 4-mana card, so they do have to trigger the Revolt just to kill it with the Fatal Push. And the 5 toughness is really not... It's really difficult for Rakto's midrange to get through. And this being having, having Trample means that like their Planeswalkers are never really safe. And on top of that, the, the Wandering Emperor with Siege Rhino combat trick is actually just pretty insane. First Strike, Trample, you know, those are pretty broken keywords there. So I did like these two cards together. Aside from that, these two cards, Carless Tracker and Vraska, I thought it was pretty phenomenal. The three mana card that investigates every time you play a land and then you just sacrifice a clue token with the Vraska without having to pay two mana. I think that's fantastic. However, however, this is a two toughness creature, which means that it does die to Bone Crusher Giant. So unless you can somehow sacrifice the, in the clue token immediately and opponent has to be tapped out, it does kind of get awkward playing this card. So although the Vraska and Tireless Tracker are pretty good cool combos in this deck, that's something to consider. So a replacement for Tireless Tracker could something be like a Briar Bridge Tracker, which is a 3 mana 2, 3. This, is, this has a Vigilance, which means that against a Yorion deck, it does prevent them from 
casting their Wandering Emperor and then minus twoing this to exile the card. And at the same time, this does survive the Bone Crusher Giant. So that's something to consider. Other than that, um, surprisingly, not. I didn't see any combo deck. So Goblin kind of became useless. Other than that, I think Paradise Druid is right. Just because you can ramp into Siege Rhino. Siege Rhino also does cause um, the Absent color, which might be a little bit hard to cast. So Paradise Druid comes in clutch. And there's a lot of targeted removal in current metagame at the moment. So this having Hexproof goes a long way. And lastly, I'm not too sure about Assassin's Trophy either. So Assassin's Trophy does just destroy any permanent that we want, which is pretty nice. This means that this against fight rigging decks, for instance, enchantment is not something we have to worry about, but it does ramp them. So it's a kind of a, like a double edged sword there. But we actually did play against an insole artifact aggro deck, which just actually just murdered us because we, aside from fatal pushes, we don't have any removal spells other than that. Vanishing Verse doesn't kill artifact cards. Assassin's Trophy, you're killing a 1-1 and giving them a land, which doesn't sound good. So I would say the deck, maybe Assassin's Trophy could change. Tireless Tracker can be replaced with the other tracker since it has three toughness. And maybe Go Blank isn't too necessary if there's not too many combo decks. I think one scavenging ooze is fine. But that's about it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And I'll see you guys all later. Bye-bye.